Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight for a special Face It Live Q&A session presented by Fayette County Public Schools in the 16th District PTA. And of course, during this time, it is most important that our families and community engage together and support each other. Yes, the Face It platform allows us to have a virtually have real talk, build real relationships, and allow us to have real ways to express what we are feeling, exert our energy in a positive way, and be solution driven in our approach to whatever our community is facing together. Absolutely. So I'm Melody Westerfield, the FACE, the Family and Community Engagement Coordinator at William Wells Brown Elementary School. And I am Vita Stewart. I am a district face liaison. And tonight's topic is focusing on facing our transition back to school. And we are excited to have an illustrious guest of panel with us today to talk about this topic. And we're going to let them introduce themselves, beginning with Ms. Bowen. Hi, I'm Debbie Bowen. I am the school's health, co health services coordinator. Um, I'm over school nurses, some of the clinics that you all use, and we'll be discussing all things COVID and quarantine tonight. Thank you. Ms. Smith? Hi, everyone. My name is Lisa Smith, and I'm one of the elementary chief of schools. Thank you for being with us tonight. Ms. Morton? Good evening. I'm Sharonda Morton. I'm the senior director of leadership. And Mr. McMillan? I'm James McMillan. I am the Chief of High Schools and Secondary Programs. Mr. Thompson. My name is Myron Thompson. I'm the Chief Operating Officer. And last but not least, Mr. Isaacs. I'm uh, Joe Isaacs, Director of Risk Management and Safety. All right. Thank all of you for being with us this evening. So, Joe, if we have anything come in on the chat, that's going to be you. You're going to do all, all our right. checks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Lisa, I'm coming straight to you. So my question to you, Lisa, is let's say as a parent, I decided to um, do re remote learning um, for my scholar, right? And um, But for whatever reason, I've changed my mind and I want to go in person. Is there a process and what is that process? There is, Melody, that's a great question. Um, so if you as a parent have decided that you wanna change the uh, mode of learning for your child, you just need to contact your school. We do have a process in place where if the school is able to accommodate your request, they will do so immediately. If however, they need a bit of time to make some adjustments to classes, um, to ensure that classes are not overloaded, they will put your child on a waiting list. And then the moment that a space opens up, they will uh, then accommodate your request. Thank you. So, Ms. Smith, again, this question is directed at you. So I've opted to have my child remain virtual. Uh, now that we've returned to in-person, what does remote learning look like for my student? Another great question. So remote learning will look a little bit different um, at each school based upon their capacity. Um, as a parent, you can anticipate there should be some um, synchronous or live learning going on with the teacher in front of a camera. And there will also be asynchronous or recorded um, types of learning going on, including uh, platforms like Imagine Learning. Um, and if you want more information about what it looks like at your school, just go ahead and contact your principal. Absolutely. So it seems like the principal is the way to start. Um, contacting your school is the way to start. So McMullen, I definitely want you in this conversation. And so my question to you is, um, when is it mandatory to send our students back um, to in-person learning? Well, that's a good question. Um, and one of the things that uh, I think we all have to recognize as a community here in Lexington is that COVID is obviously impacting, but not only our for our families, but our communities differently. And so we do know that there are some families that have risk factors when it comes to health. We know that there are students being raised by grandparents and, and great grandparents. And so as a district, you know, we want to take that into consideration and we're going to meet our families where they are. And so as far as the term mandatory, um, right now, we're working to get all of our students and, the, and our families who want their students back to in-person, we're working to get them back into the classroom um, 
now. And so we'll have our uh, 10th, 11th graders and our 7th and 8th graders joining us next week. And uh, we'll hope we'll have an announcement pretty soon about some of our A5 programs coming shortly. And so as far as mandatory, um, going into next year, we're going to continue as a district to work with Debbie Bowen and the Chiefs and Joe and risk management and uh, make decisions um, with Superintendent Helm and our board on uh, what are those uh, sort of best avenues for our families. And we're going to work with them and continue to work with them. So it's not going to be something that I'm going to say we're going to be mandatory now, but it is something that we're going to continue to look for and inform our public. What uh, What is a A5 programs? All right. I have to remind myself that I sometimes speak in education lingo. So I appreciate that, Ms. Westerfield. You've known me for a long time. So our A5 programs are going to be things like STEAM Academy, Carter G. Woodson, um, TLC. And so, as you guys know, we've been working on uh, our transportation plan that Mr. Mr. Thompson may be talking about at some point. And so we're hoping that we're going to have, not hoping, we know we're going to have an announcement pretty soon about those programs returning. Yes, yeah, so that is a great segue because the next series of questions is about transportation and directed to Mr. Thompson. Mr. Thompson, we, we know there's been a lot of discussion around transportation concerns. Can you discuss uh, what those uh, concerns are and what, uh, what that means district-wide? And yes, that loaded question, will all students be able to return to in-person learning before the end of the school year? Thank you, Mr. Uh, Nationwide, there's been a transportation shortage throughout the country uh, for school districts, and COVID has only worsened that situation uh, for all school districts. So uh, basically for us, uh, what it has meant is that, you know, we've been very intentional about creating a lot of opportunities for our children. Uh, 12 specialized programs in particular draw all over the county that is really um, very difficult to route and to have um, buses available to do that. So basically the shortage has sort of impacted our ability to deliver those programs. Uh, the way that we did pre-COVID. So um, we have, again, gotten 95% of our students back to in-person learning, and there's about 5% that are hanging out there in those A5 and other programs that Mr. McMillan mentioned. And, you know, it's taken some creativity and some adjustments, but we are absolutely committed to having those students back in our buildings for in-person learning, and we will be making that announcement uh, here very shortly. But we are committed to making sure that they do get in front of instructors and back in our buildings. Absolutely. That's good. That's good. Thank you for that, that information. Um, so Debbie, let's get you in here on this conversation. Finally. Okay, the quarantine process. Um, can you provide uh, me, families and our parents, a better understanding on what that process looks like? And when is it necessary? And you know, the precautions that we need to take, um, and keeping students and staff safe, safe, right? Can you provide us um, some information about that? Debbie, you might be on mute. I'm muted, yep. <laughs> I, um, we all have developed a, a, as Mr. McMillan speaks and Edu speak, we've all developed a new vernacular when it comes to this disease. So I'm gonna go over the two terms that often get misconstrued or, or switched inter, inter, interchanged. That's isolation versus quarantine. Isolation is a sick person. It's someone with a contagion and they're put in isolation, they're isolated from everyone else so that they do not spread whatever the contagion is that they have. Those people who were exposed to that sick person and exposure is 15 minutes cumulatively over a day, closer than six feet with or without a mask. So exposed people are identified and they are put into quarantine which basically is the same as isolation, but they're not sick. They're just put off away from the rest of the population so that the contagion doesn't spread. So when it comes to our COVID cases, of course we have people in our schools who have gotten COVID. They will report those cases to our hotline and I'll give that number, it's 381-3277 and I'll repeat it at the end. When a parent reports a positive case, we put it into our database. We automatically look to see if there are siblings in the family. Those siblings are automatically put in quarantine as well. And the family will receive a quarantine letter from the health department. Then we will go through and look at the school day, look at where the child has been, look at who they've been around, and we will identify those close contacts. 
We'll make a list and the call center, the people from 381-3277 will give you a call and let you know that your child will need to quarantine and they'll give you the dates and let you know what you need to do. No one else in the household needs to quarantine, just the person who is exposed to that child. So your other children are fine. They can go do their other activities. You and your husband can go to work if, if you want or caregivers can go. We just wanna make sure that that child is not coming to school and possibly spreading contagion around. The other situation that we'll have is if there is a family um, case, if mom or dad, grandparent, aunt, uncle living in the house should become positive, that whole house is quarantined. And it's just like with our kids who test positive. The health department will issue a quarantine letter. The family will be asked to stay at home for a period of time until the contagion is resolved. Generally with someone who is asymptomatic or has mild symptoms, it's about 10 days for um, them to be released from isolation. And then once that family member has been released from isolation, that's when the quarantine period will start for the rest of the family because they have been with a sick person up until the last day. So that could be up to 20 days. Families need to be prepared for that and we'll help them, we'll help them get in and out of NTI, we'll provide for um, supports for that. So also we've had the question, how are we keeping our, ch our children safe? Well, we're doing everything that the CDC recommends and we all know the CDC likes to change their mind frequently. So we try to keep up with what they're doing and um, we're, we're letting kids socially distance when, when possible Everyone is required to wear a face mask except when eating. And we will let some students take them off in certain situations on the playground. Um, we're doing assigned seating. We're keeping up with lit, line lists. We have list upon list upon list. So we know where that child has been. We have PPE available. We encourage hand washing. We have hand sanitizer. So we're doing everything that we can to try and keep everyone safe while learning at school. Thank you. That was that was a lot of information and it was good information. Um I, I'm one, sorry. three two seven seven. <laughs> Say it one more time just in case. Three eight one three two seven seven. Right. Vita. <laughs> All right. So um Miss Morton, this question is going to be uh, directed to you. We know that the district has made uh, great efforts to improve communication. Families are hoping that the communication that has been established will be maintained. So what will the district do to maintain the open lines of communication for the remainder of the school and beyond? First off, I wanna thank you for uh, sharing and recognizing that we have put a great deal of effort toward improving our communication. And uh, thanks to Lisa Deffendahl, who is our communications person and a guru uh, she, helps us, she helps to bridge that gap and to connect to our district, to our family, to our community. And it is, and it is vital important, vitally important to us that we keep those lines of communication open. As you know, we have the Facebook, we have our own Facebook page. You have a, a school websites, you receive robocalls. There are surveys and we, we ask that you please partic participate in surveys when they come out because that's your voice. That's like your vote. That's how you let us know exactly how you're feeling. Uh, we will continue to uh, encourage our schools because principals send out weekly, uh, not weekly, but maybe monthly communiques and newsletters from your classrooms. Those are all the things that are in place and will continue to be in place and it won't stop. And please, please, please do look at, at the HAM. Dr. HAM shares with you on a, week, a weekly message that gives, keeps you engaged and helps you to know what exactly is going on with our schools. We, are, we will continue to work to ensure that all of our communications are in languages to help our families who uh, may have, uh, you know, be not, who may have a, well, a different language, home language. Your home language may be different from maybe beyond the English. We wanna be sure that you have uh, the uh, interpretations that you need so you can understand. So it's, it's a priority for us. We talk about it a, 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 a great deal. We spend hours working on it just to make sure that, that you are connected to our schools and to our district. Absolutely. And we think and so. I can say as a grandmother of, of several students in Fayette County, uh, we thank you for the communication, for keeping us informed. 
No, I thank you all for it. It's a two way. It takes all of us. It takes it's like, it takes the families working with us and 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 uh, giving us a little grace. But we try our best. And we want to keep those lines open at all times. Absolutely, a village. It takes a village. Yeah, and so, okay, Miss Morton, let me ask you then. Um, what is the district's vision on um, when it comes to terms of learning loss and recovery? And like you said, as a as a uh, as a as a village, you know, what can we do as a district, a family, and a community um, to help out? Well, the district is already planning its summer ignite program, which is going to begin in June. There's going to be three sessions. Uh, so, please, parents, we need you to ensure that your children participate in those sessions th throughout the summer. It, our summer ignite program will begin, as I said, in June. There will be uh, more information will be coming around April the 8th. There's going to be a, a conversation about it, but go ahead and prepare your students. Be positive. You know, you can support us by ensuring that they that your students attend. You connect with teachers and make sure that that you you know, read the communication that comes out and uh, there's going to be transportation. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome summer for kids, but this is the best way for you and for us to get our children, to accelerate the learning, to move forward into our, our new year, to get the children prepared wherever they may have been learning loss. Absolutely. And let me just plug this real quick. Um, teachers, staff of the district, um, prepare yourself to be a participant. Um, yeah prepare yourself to be a participant because I will be on board helping out hands-on as well. So um, just a little plug right there for you. Miss Westerfield, can I add to that? Yes. You, mind? you know, my boss is, and Lisa's boss is Sharonda Morton, and she's, a, she's an amazing leader. And one of the things that she has said to us often, often is that uh, COVID didn't happen to us, it happened for us in education. And it's allowed us to look at how we educate our students in Fayette County differently. And I, I told this example not too long ago to the chiefs of schools that, you know, I have a third grader and a sixth grader and I've captured my third grader. I've seen my third grader learn how to work digitally. I've seen, I've seen her upload videos, excuse me, I have a first grader and a sixth grader. So I'm talking about the first grader, upload videos and create some amazing things that my sixth grader is just learning to do. And so when we talk about learning loss, we also got to mm. talk about the fact that they've been able to learn differently and that's going to actually accelerate their learning into the future. And oftentimes we want to, we want to compare what we, what students have, have sort of experienced this year pre COVID. And again, going back to what Ms. Morton said, it, COVID is, 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 obviously brought a lot of families, some families together. It's sort of forced us to look at education differently. And ultimately, I think these students who have lived through it and experienced education through it in the future are going are gonna to have some skills that uh, the generations before them didn't have. So it's, it's, it's definitely been something that uh, it's going to propel us forward as a district. Absolutely. Can your, can your first grader teach me? <laughs> Seriously, they're going anything. to be the teachers of us all. Can she teach? Uh, yeah, I know adults that can barely unmute their Zoom. So, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for that. So, uh, this question is uh, for our chiefs. Um, we know there was an announcement last week <laughs> um, about accountability and the assessments that um, will be happening uh, this school year. Can you tell us what does this mean in the midst of a pandemic for our students and let our families know how, you know, how this is going to go about? Sure, I'll start with elementary. There are a couple of things that I would want our families to know about this uh, state testing in the spring. The first one is that it is going to be a shortened test um, due to the pandemic um, and that will be taking place at the last couple of weeks in May. Um, there will be more information coming from schools uh, regarding the specifics around that. But the second, probably most important piece of it is if you are a remote learner and you are not comfortable coming to school in person, your child will not be penalized if they do not take that assessment. Uh, children are going to get, uh, they'll get credit for participation, but they will not be, scores will not be going back to schools or districts. So we want to take the pressure off there. If you're not comfortable, it is okay and you can just continue to learn at home. Yeah, just adding to that from sort of the secondary level, I mean, there's two sides right now um, with teachers and parents on, on, on the decision around having state testing, especially um, looking at Fayette County with, you know, us having a, a 
just returning in March. And, and ultimately, you know, those two sides are those wanting those baseline scores and having something to look at and those who think that, you know, we shouldn't be taking more time away from in-class instruction. So we're working with our principals and um, obviously our families, as Ms. Smith just uh, talked about. But as far as uh, some of the assessments that families may want to look forward, they may be looking forward to at the secondary level, we do have our, our career and technical education um, into program assessments. Those are going to start around March 22nd. And that's how many of our high school seniors are going to get that career readiness piece that we talk about. And then in April, um, April 13th through the 15th, that's when ACT testing for our juniors and any of our 10th grade, 10th graders who uh, signed up to, to take it as a 10th grader, that's when they'll get that assessment. And so there are some assessments that we know that, that parents did opt in for and do want to participate in. And so those are just a couple of dates and when those are going to be. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, thank you for, uh, guys for giving us an overview of the accountability um, testing that's uh, coming. Um, but we are going to take a deeper dive into uh, testing and the accountability system on our Face It show on May the 6th. So put that on your calendar. If you're interested in no more, we're going to take a deeper dive on that day. Absolutely. And okay. And so James, okay, regardless if I am virtual or in person, um, what resources um, can I, our families have access to for the remainder of the year? Um, well, as somebody who's worked outside of Fayette County in a different district and now inside Fayette County for, for quite a while, I will tell you that one of the benefits of Fayette County is the resources that we have for students. We have our health clinics that Debbie Bowen oversees that are continuing, um, our students that need those mental health services that we have really upped and, and, and listened to our community about what, what their students need. Those are still ongoing. Um, obviously, Michelle Coker, and I know Myron, that's kind of in Myron uh, Thompson's world. They're going to continue with the free meals and making sure that our students uh, are get fed. Our youth service centers, um, I mean, they have not stopped. They have gone 100 miles an hour during COVID to make sure that all students and families get the, the things that they need. And so one of the things that I know uh, that Lisa and I talked about when we, when we talk about resources is that, um, and we've mentioned earlier, our principals are some of the best people to tap into. Every single family has unique needs and those school principals wanna make sure that they meet those needs. So those are definitely people that uh, if anybody needs anything they should turn to. And of course, we're always available. Every one of us on this, on this Zoom today, if somebody needs something, we'll help connect them to the person that they need. Elisa, did he pretty much wrap everything up or do you, did he wrap everything up or do you have he, anything? No, he did a fantastic okay. job uh, summarizing for sure. So, and you he did it fairly check. succinctly too. So okay. good job. We just have to check. We have to check, you know. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we like to always end our shows on a positive note. So we just want you to provide a few words of encouragement in like 30 seconds or less. And since we haven't heard from you, Mr. Isaac, would you start by giving us just a positive note and then, uh, then everybody else can chime in? Well, we just want everyone to be rest assured that risk management has done everything they can to create a safe learning environment. PPE from social distancing stickers to thermal imaging cameras. So you can be rest assured that we've done everything possible to create a safe learning environment. I would just add that this has been a great learning experience for us. It's been difficult and challenging for our schools and our families. However, we also have learned some great new strategies and new techniques for teaching that have really, as uh, Mr. McMillan alluded to earlier in this, this show, have really propelled our children into the future. So we are gonna say that's a positive and take that one as a win. All right, thank you, Debbie. I'll just use my tagline on a lot of my emails, stay positive and test negative. <laughs> Love it, <laughs> Mr. Thompson. <laughs> for me, it just feels good to see the yellow buses out on the roads again. Uh, you know, for the last few weeks, it's been like the first day of school for every week as we've added on grade levels. And we're continuing to finalize that last bit for our specialized programs, and that will be coming soon. So it's just good to have our folks back in school. It's been a long time coming, but we wanted to do it in a safe manner, as Joe indicated. But the time is here. We're ready to finish this school year strong and we're going to have a good school year. We're going to build upon this and we're going to hit it in the summer and we're going to roll into the fall. Dave I like County that resilient. energy. I yes. like that energy. I like yes. it. Okay, James, you're up. Um, I'll just say this and I, I put it in an email to my principals right before we went live and, and I got to experience it both at the elementary schools and, and at the, the middle and high schools. And that is 
that first day back having all the kids in, you can definitely see smiles through a mask. And it was amazing seeing the smiles on students' faces and being able to reconnect. We have missed that as educators. And um, it, it, it literally brightens our heart to have those kids back in the building. And we're grateful that the families who have, who have brought them, who have allowed them to come back in person, we, we definitely appreciate you trusting us with your students. Absolutely. And Ms. Morton, we're gonna end with you. I'd just like to say ditto everyone. No, I'm just kidding. But I, I would like to say, uh, uh, parents, you are the, your children's first teachers. And I could tell when the kids came, came back in, many of you were challenged at home to become at home teachers and, 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 and you love and now you appreciate our teachers even more. But you were their first teacher. And believe me, you did a good job in, the, in standing in and helping us out and supporting by what you did in your homes to ensure their children that they had their Chromebooks, that they had the, everything they needed as uh, you did a, a, a splendid job because they mm -hmm. came into school ready, ready, prepared, uh, following all the rules. They were mm -hmm. glad to be there. And like the Mr. McMillan said, we were glad to see them. But thank you for being those at home supports. Let, please do keep it up because we need you. Continue the partnership. We appreciate you throughout this season. And as Mr. I do say COVID-19 didn't just happen to us, it happened for us. It has, has bridged, uh, just so it helped us to connect with you all even more. And we thank you and we appreciate you. And do Absolutely. Out to your principals and, and keep, 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 keep in contact with us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mr. Field, can, can, yeah. I have, can I make one more statement, please? Absolutely, yes. Anyone that is looking for employment, we <laughs> would like to have you join the Fayette County Public Schools as a school bus driver, a school bus monitor, or a food service uh, child nutrition <laughs> worker. 381 uh, 4740, Fayette County Public Schools, a great place to work. We, we're, we're gonna definitely add that to the post. I'm gonna let you know something, Mr. Thompson. I am doing a virtual job fair and Fayette County Public Schools will be there. So we oh, are trying to be oh. a partnership for you as well. So we thank you all for this information and everybody that's watching. Um, we thank you for joining us tonight for this Face It Live show. Um, we would like to stay connected with you and continue to build a stronger community of support um, for all of our families. Vita is gonna tell us quickly how we can do that. You are mute. Oops, sorry. And I talked about other people. Yes, please send us your pictures, your videos, your words of encouragement that we can share with each uh, that we can share with each other about how we're facing all of the things we're going through together. And we will highlight some of your messages uh, to share and support other families. We also want you to know what questions what questions you have and suggestions uh, from our live chat. Again, you can email those questions to faceit at fayette.kyschools.us or text us at 859-903-5531. Thank you. Thank you so much for that information. Thank so you. our next Faces show will focus on speaking with our parents as they are facing our return to in-person learning. Um, that's going to be on March 18th at 630. You all, as always, um, we love connecting with you all and continue to face it together. We will see you all soon.